this is Anne, and she's mm -hmm. a member of that group and has been particularly um, a real stalwart in both our planning and air quality and environmental aspects of the group. And a very old friend of mine, not so much old because I'm older than her, but <laughs> a lean, longevity friend of mine, Jenny, who's from Slade Green. And both of them have got a minute or two to offer to suggest to you how their thinking came about. But one of the things, um, <coughs> the school that's within the Central Charlton Residence Association area, Fosdean Primary School, um, I met Ian Mudway at the meetings of the Motor City Town and Run, and was really impressed and very interested in his ex home project. Spoke to him at that meeting, and he said, oh, you know, that's okay. I kept emailing him, and he came along to the school and did the most amazing day. I think somebody asked earlier something about the curriculum and, and how schools can be involved because it is a year four national curriculum um, topic in science so it's something that schools can very easily do but he came with his King's team and just the kids in year four just had the most amazing day. Um, I, I, thought at the time it was still going to be part of the Excel project, but because he had been doing this as a four-year project over at um, Tower Hamlets so, and, and Newham School, so um, it wasn't, I think he was just being really kind in the end, I suspect that that was just him fitting us in, um, and did a lot of activities which we sort of picked on for some of the noticing town um, fun days where we've had a stall at uh, events and, uh, and, and would probably be able to reproduce in some aspects ourselves. So there's a curriculum that supports it and um, <coughs> fun activities that again can, can be worth for children. Anyway, um, the Residence Association of Charlton where I live as I say um, had a sort of I wasn't in on the beginning which is where Anne will probably give you a couple of minutes of that, but we followed up using with kind of from Andrew again, using tubes, and we did a survey last February. February? That's February. And um, let's have a quick look. Um, this was one of Silvertown's tubes, but that's the sort of area where we're starting from. I'll go back to that one. This was the area. Um, we've got a, and it's a very small residence association area. It's bordered by the railway line and um, a, just a, a, a housing. It doesn't include Victoria Way nor Charlton Church Lane. It's the areas within, within it. And uh, this is uh, this, kind of, this is where it stops just here. Um, you can see that we've got some reasonable, the central area, I mean I was, I mean I was, Daryl really criticised me for, for suggesting in the newsletter that within the area, it's not great, and I wouldn't for a moment suggest that it was, within the area it is less than outside of the area. And I think my thinking was that because we had decided that it, or the thought was that it wouldn't be the only one we would do, that we would do another, but if you could in any way suggest that within the residential area it is slightly better than being outside the area and we're expecting changes to occur. So that if you can show changes, whilst you may not want to suggest just how bad they can be, I mean 48 and 38 and it's, it's not to be it's not insignificant at all. But but if you can then show that later on there is a, 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 a decrease in quality then um, people actually raise their eyebrows a little more or they listen a bit more because they think something's changed so, and the motion of that um, case. Anyway, we were quite fortunate to have somebody fund that. We tried to do the, would you like to adopt your own tube, but only apart from the one person who did put up the funding, there was one other resident over here who, who bought a tube outside house and we were quite fortunate again that there was only one that went astray um, and we are just currently reporting back 
and hoping to focus our AGM on the uh, on air quality in the area and what we might do next and how it will pan out. Um, there's just a slide which should give you that's a uh, review of the it's probably the same sort of Excel um, uh, document that you've all had. The one outside of the school is an interesting one because in a way it's how I got started here because I've been monitoring the traffic flow outside. We've lost our, uh, our school crossing patrol for a couple of years. And so I said, oh, yeah. And they said, the only way you can get one is to monitor the number of children that are crossing the road and the number of traffic, the amount of traffic that's passing the school. So I went out there with a notebook and pen and started counting. And as a result of that, one of the parents then said, oh, you know, there's, there's a meeting you should go to. If I go and, and that's my you know, life's never been the same since. But what we do have as a result of that, because Silton had two monitoring, two monitoring um, monitors there outside of the school, we've now been able to. This is the third one, so we have got a very good um, um, reference to, to refer back to. Um, unfortunately, I can't show you the slides because for some reason it didn't here on this, um, my memory stick for this. But the one thing that I was horrified to see, when I asked somebody who was taking photographs <coughs> to send them to me the other evening, and I realised just how you expect people, and this is a small warning, you expect people to actually do as you plan. When you plan your map and you tell them exactly where to put the Attitude. You expect them to do it, and sadly they didn't. Because a couple of what I did, I started off with one group of people, did about two or three tubes with them, went back and started off another group half an hour later or so, and thought that they'd got the idea of how you do this. But what I didn't realise was that they decided to think, oh, I think it might be better put here as opposed to here. So, going back to the, um, the map itself, we find in the photographs and the eagle eye of Anne here, who was particularly looking in her road, which is one of the gardens, this one here, she's phoned me and just, you know, said, there's not, it's not where it's supposed to be, it was over the other side of the road, outside of our residential, um, our residents association area across here, which might have shown something worse than it was, but that's not the point. It was for the residents association area. And then we see in the photograph, this one over here, near the Dean Street, was actually on the other side of the road. So, you think you have said, but it will be sorted next time. <laughs> oh, too right, it will. <laughs> um, do you want to add um, anything further? Oh, just um, give a background maybe as to how we started. Apologies for being personal, but for me, air quality is personal. I was born in Charlton, I don't mind confessing up, 1951, and I went to Fosdean Road School. In those days, Charlton was heavily industrial, and Fosdean Road School was slap bang against Johnson and Phillips' rubber vulcanisation plant. But the two years I attended Fosdean, I was hardly ever there because of bronchial problems, and I was moved to Sherrington Road specifically to move me away. I thought that was it. 25 years later, I took part in... Um, a sports science study at Leeds University, where I was found to have lung function impairment that they attributed to exposure to childhood pollution. I have subsequently come back to Charlton, and anecdotally, I noticed I was coughing a lot. Surprise, surprise. And yet, Charlton had changed. The rubber vulcanisation plant isn't there. Um, the housing... Little housing estate now, isn't it, where Johnson Phillips was? 
And yet there I am coughing away. And a lot of people in our residence association just couldn't believe that green, leafy, attractive charm could have an air pollution problem. So eventually, um, a few bloody-minded people on the committee got together and said, OK, we've managed to get some funding from a private donor. Let's do a baseline study. All it will tell us is what it's like now. And we can then do another one, I think, longitudinal, is it? Is that the posh word for it? We can do a longitudinal study and see how things change for the better or for the worse. And I think we hope to do one about the same time next year. But anecdotally, the mums at um, Bosdean are now telling us it's absolutely awful with that new Sainsbury at the bottom. The amount of traffic that's coming down, the new stuff, it's absolutely appalling. So although we don't want to anticipate um, our results, I think we might have a direction. But basically, we did have to persuade people within our association that there might be a problem because on the face of it, the attractive appearance of our catchment, they were not convinced that there could possibly be a problem. It was one that existed to the north, down the hill. It wasn't theirs. <laughs> Um, so, all, yeah, all really yeah, really a bit, a bit. But, but basically, um, the peninsula, yeah, yeah. Um, the main road where um, te the new Sainsbury, Marks and Spencer are, that's where the problem was. They couldn't see that there might be one with us. And I think, would well, you say that some people are coming around to the idea that it's not as clean and green as they thought? Slowly but surely. Slowly but surely. Yeah. Okay. Some, you've still got us. Oh, we still have some um, refuse mix that somehow we've fudged the figures or we're interpreting them wrongly or whatever because there is a certain resistance to believing that we've got a problem. Now that could be connected with their house price, but who am I to say? Are these people possibly connected with past decisions about the area? No. No, I can assure you of that. I mean, you know me, Darren, you know what a bloody-minded old woman I am. Yeah. And uh, I think we can... I don't care if he agrees with me, I said it if I cared. Um, you know, but, yeah, there are some people who feel that there can't possibly be a problem because we're too <coughs> green and... I mean, you, you know yourself, look at those lovely trees around Charlton. Can't possibly have a problem, can we? You've got quite a steep hill, haven't you? And We've so got quite a steep yeah, hill, yeah. Yeah, so the, that residence association area, is that kind of on the hill going yeah. up from the main yeah, road? Yeah, but one yeah. of the things that we've discovered, as yeah. somebody before said, I, who was it who was saying about the um, nature of um, the area with its pollution settling? Yeah. 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 yeah, well, we have the Coombs, the clues in the name, East Coombe, West Coombe. And all sorts of odd things swirl about in those coombs. And I think that we're possibly in an area which really does actually quite trap pollution. But um, we need another study, really, to show which direction it's going in. Yeah. To what extent does does nitrogen oxide kind of roll down hills? How heavy is it? Does anyone know with the, the science of that as to how much no. it settles? In? We certainly know that noise... Um, gets trapped in the cones and it can be very, very deceptive that you can watch a wrecking ball to the east and the sound, watch it, the demolition sound sounds if like they're coming from the east yeah. and you're actually watching what's happening. So there might be some geographical yeah, yeah. Um, factor going, I'm not clever enough to know about these things, but I do know that the money is there for our next... Um, do you remember the survey? Uh, there was the big fuss, you know, when about diesels and trying to get the kind of you know diesel filters put on because um, it particularly affected kids because they were lower down. Mm -hmm. so the, the, I, I know that the particular, you know, the heavy matter obviously kind of sinks down. But, um, mm -hmm. It's just quite, it's quite interesting the whole height issue, isn't it? And just how stuff swirls around, as you say, in London. You know. But I think it is worth mentioning to anybody wanting to do a study that you may have to convince people because there are people out there, believe it or not, who just do not want to believe it, do not want to get it. And you have to be quite forceful. Um, and you've got to be bloody mad because 
the, yeah. the, there are people Is that on a problem? the committee. Uh, no, no, not really. But you know, I'm not a member of the committee at all. But you go along to meetings to report on such things, and you do get people who are so sitting on the fence to be at least. Because and, and in their the whole deal. group couldn't actually agree that we would just speak out against Silvertown. I mean, they know the implications of it, but they wouldn't actually fully just go with it. And I just don't want to we had the same with Ikea. Mm -hmm. We had exactly the same with Ikea. Mm -hmm. um, and that, um, no, we couldn't possibly speak out against Ikea because it's the best thing since sliced bread. They're going to fulfil all their promises. And, you know, the promised land is coming to Chalk when Ikea arrived. And if you believe that, you I, believe in the Tooth Fairy, darling. Can I let's an observation that somebody can see their own home on that land. Um, and that I think it's all why there's a rat run. And I just wonder that, I mean, how much is CCRA looking at... Well, I'll, I'll flip this thread back a little bit. I was in Walthamstow the other day, uh, looking at some of the mini Holland work they've done. So, uh, which is basically a lot of cutting off rat runs and just stopping people from driving, you know, using the area as a through routes. Um, and I just wonder how much work CCRA has done with that, because it's particularly, sorry for being ultra parochial, um, but particularly, yeah, the, Victoria particularly the Victoria Way Railway Bridge, Fosdine School, for example, where um, Waterford Forest Council has built sort of nice planters, blocked the road off, and other people now are using it as they sit uh, Greenwich uh, put barriers up on both sides. Uh, with restrictions, with and restrictions it's horrible, um, and, and, and basically encourages it as a rat run. Um, and I just wonder how much work CCRA is is doing, or if it's CCRA even on, on, the, on the map. At the moment, but I yeah. personally am doing yet another um, traffic count yeah. outside of the school because um, what you can't see here, uh, perhaps on the um, Silk Town map, you may see better. That one. Um, this, the, this, this access road here that's leading to Blackwood Tunnel. Along here as well, you have got uh, roads which will lead from Shooters Hill Road across here. You will get that. What is happening? Where you've got the new uh, Sainsbury's and Marks and Spencer's building, uh, right on the lower road, which is just down. Yeah, that mm -hmm. one. So just about there. That road that Daryl was just talking about, the um, Victoria Way. No. This, this is the responsibility of the wider area. In fact, there's a lot of things you can do both within the CCR area without the CCR area. So, from the. So, from the. From Shooters Hill Road, this will now, presumably, I'm presuming there will be a rat run coming down here to get over here to come along the lower road, Woodage Road here, where the new building is. It's already happening. Yeah. Well, I'm well, starting. Well, I've been asking that I've been putting out on the Charlton Mummies and those uh, sites to ask for parents from school to come and count with me, which is what we have got here, some counting figures. And um, we've been doing that, and I've been doing it each half term, and I shall continue to do that because a year ago, well, um, when the decision, I've been attending some meetings. The stakeholder group meetings, <coughs> and Denise Highland, the leader of the council, had been saying that um, when I asked what's happening, when you get down to here, they're enabling a right turn out into Victoria, out of Victoria Way into Woodbridge Road, and then a left turn along with Gannings Road, which will give you access to the car park. That it's which is hard to see here, but um, so I s suggested. But that's going to be a rat run. It will come straight past the school, cause a problem. So therefore, we should not be allowing a right turn at the end. However, she and her infinite wisdom decided that yes, we can allow that to occur. But what we'll need to do is to review this in a year. 
So I opened it from just before this the development opened, the Sainsbury's opened a few weeks ago. Um, before and afterwards, and now for every half term, I'm going to do a traffic survey um, until that year is up. So next June, I shall present it again and say, well, look, this is what we're proving to you. We've, and, and this survey was the same as about three years ago when I did the first one. Um, because to, to get the one hot person, which we did get, then lost, but got back again. And, um, and so therefore we've got something to compare it against. So this one we did last uh, a few weeks ago was very similar to the one three, three years ago. It, I mean, it just strikes me that, that with some judicious road closure and bus gates, Chartridge Lane is a problem. But, um, but most of those roads you can could, you could deal with from, from the Blackwell Tunnel approach right the way through to Charlton Lane. You could, you could end right running completely yeah. with, with a few is, road closures and bus gates. Problem. The one opposite the school, which is here, this road here leads straight up to Blackheath, uh, Blackheath Standard, uh, yeah. Eastham Avenue, and that's, that is a problem. That's and right. This is where I stand about here and counting the traffic that goes past and down that way and around there and around there. Um, and that's way higher than it, and the 48 that was the last time. How do you see things shaping up on the as and when the new old lady of Grace School was born. Well, that's, yeah, exactly. It's an Is that going to put three schools in competition at the same time as people around? I'm, I'm a governor at the school as well. I went to a governor's meeting and told them it just exactly how problematic not just this was and what I was doing and why, of course, but how parents themselves are just, it was appalling. Somebody just plonked themselves on a yellow line right at the corner where I was standing in the local and like this, and only just just to go round the car in, by the side of it, there was an actual parking bay free. And when I said, "Look, oh, it's parking," you know, it's a yellow line. Oh, but I've got to get the children in the car. Let the children walk a few steps, which is why when you take them out on school trips, they're exhausted before elderly people like me. Anyway, just to cut quickly, um, the other, uh, as a result of that, I also mentioned this to Jenny, who lives down at Slade Green, miles out, just before Dartford, that is, and uh, she was very into work, works with Slade Green Forum, which is their local residence group, and she got involved and wanted to do a survey herself, and she's been up against a huge job. Do you want to quick, and I have got pictures for this yeah. one. Um, it's osmosis, you see, knowing Jill, I've got involved in this, but um, it's only, from my point of view, we're a very small area, and it used to be called Cabbage Island, where we live, and so if you do a square like that, this is the river, and um, there was two roads in, and there was the crossing of the <coughs> railway line, so this is the railway line cutting through the middle. And there used to be the gates, the opening gates. The opening gates are shut now, so this doesn't exist anymore, but we've got a road over the bridge here. Round, and the river goes around like that. Along here, there's a very big dual carriageway. This is a single carriageway. You can get round the back into the back of Savory on this one road, because the river curves around like that. You've got industrial, you've got metal recycling, You've got industrial, and that's a single carriageway into the back. They shut down the school here, secondary school, and they're building, say, 500 houses. But instead of making a new road into it, they're just putting a little back road off this single one and then joining onto this bridge one over here. So they haven't used the opportunity to create a new road. We were called Cabbage Island maybe 50 years ago because it was so isolated. They cut up one of the access points and you've got this enormous dual carriageway. And I didn't bother about pollution, didn't bother about anything. But then we were then, <coughs> this 500 was forced on us. Then we, and this, sorry, this is a, a big dual carriageway going down to the M25 and Dartford is just here. So that's Dartford there. And the M25 and the bridge is sort of behind across the river here. 
So that's the, um, the tunnel. So we get stuck from very many places coming along the dual carriageway. You've got a nursery part of a school here. And I wasn't bothered about the pollution, this sort of thing. But then they told us, not only with this 500 here, we've got another half, at least another thousand houses according to Boris. Where are they going to put them? What are they going to do about the roads? We can't cope. We couldn't cope before we had anything built here. You know, many years ago we couldn't cope. Now we've got this enormous dual carriageway. I was saying to somebody yesterday afternoon, I went out to pray for to Sainsbury's. I followed a German lorry from my house here, because we can't go across there, along here and round into Crayford there. Coming back an hour and a half later, I followed another German lorry. And then I went to Dartford in the evening, six o'clock, and it was a Czech lorry I followed. I wasn't following other cars. It's got so bad. St. Chris have got a big depot over there now, and Asda have got a new big depot at Belvedere. So we've just got, suddenly, We've got thousands and thousands of lorries and we've got a big roundabout sort of there to go into Crayford. And they'll park on the roundabout, they'll... But, so, because of Jill's experience and what Jill's been doing, I thought, well, let's have a go and see, because you need baselines, what Jill was saying about baselines. If I want to personally object to this other thousand houses, I need some proof. So this is, was where I was coming from, not known to Silvertown, not anything, just the fact that you've got to establish your baseline wherever you do anything. And this is why you're counting the traffic and building up your evidence, isn't it, Jill? So we did monitoring here. There's a little roundabout here. Where well, else? Sorry. No yeah. It's Which way off. This, this, this is homepage geography, but yeah, so this is one of the first ones where you've got the tube, you can see all the lorries stacked up most of the time. And that was extremely hot. I don't know the figures. Do you 76. Know? 76. Well, just past that is the nursery part of the school. Which is this one? So that's the school. That's, I live off that little road there. This is the dual carriageway. And this is the playground for the nursery part of the school. And that was very high, wasn't it? That's about the Oh, it's only four to three. But it's the same dual carriageway. Maybe further along the dual carriageway before they went round the corner, it was very high. Very high ones were uh, north Yeah, so that's the dual carriageway. That's dual carriageway. It's that one. Yeah. Look, the up uh, taking another view though to try and engage people. You know, you you need facts in order to engage people. You've got to say to people who are going to that school. And did you have any idea how bad it is along this carriageway? Because the council don't have any monitoring here. They've got one over here, but it's not actually in Slay Green. It's on the, where the um, industrial site, the metal recycling is. There is no council monitoring in the whole of our forum area, in the whole of our bit of Slay Green. So that. We've got to go and do the work ourselves. And I think ways to engage, to look for the younger people. So the figure for the um, school, primary school is very high. And that's why I Jill said about the buggy thing. I should be very interested if that develops. Because that's how I think I'm going to engage people. There was an awful lot of resistance from the forum. They don't understand anything about lung pollution. And maybe we need like Health Education Council, somebody to come into our area and to educate the people in our area. The forum weren't, weren't interested. Two of us paid for it ourselves, which I think is really wrong, because they all say, oh yeah, yeah, we've got to do another study. Do you think there's a perception problem? Because yeah. it's like Green, you get the very, very educated in London. People might think, well, yeah, this is something you get in Oxford Street or in The Central trees Town, in but, Chartland. But not here, because yeah. there's, there's the yeah. marshland. No, yeah, yeah. The trees in Chuck yeah. is exactly the same thing, I think, as yeah. what you're saying. I mean, what Jenny hasn't mentioned is that, yes, she and a friend put up the money for that and could afford eight tubes, oh. but two of them went missing. So yeah. that yeah. percentage. Yeah, which yeah. is a choke yeah. point, too, got yeah. yeah. the, the other thing was just that the. the One by the school. Is that the Thames Road and North End Road have been the approach to any planned Belvedere road bridge as well. Mm. So oh, yeah. 
So we met with the local council and thought perhaps we've got it all signed and to some extent, yes, but they don't follow through. Yeah, you you're at a meeting with our local council. council. Yeah, but then he the, didn't come to the meeting that the forum had, so it's really disappointing and it's mm. very hard. Yeah, we just start, I'm, I don't know anything, just starting at the bottom, mm -hmm. but the first part is even to try and get your local forum to be on your side. Yeah. yeah. But this is it, I think people often, I mean, I've been tweeting some, some things from, from this and uh, someone, said, someone said about the CCR, I think, well, the, well, the problem obviously is people, you know, driving up the, you know, they can't move when they drive to the back of the tunnel. Well, not in Victoria Way, it's not, it's not in this area. Yeah. And I think that's, you know, that's the thing, people don't kind of quite realise that, are reluctant to realise that actually this is a problem in their area, yeah. but not. Yes, yeah. they, they have no idea. Sorry, has anybody's got any questions? Yes. Oh, <laughs> Jim, no, not <laughs> I just live there. But I have lived there for a long time. And I'm, maybe you should say, well, people always say not in my backyard, but it's got beyond a joke. Yeah. You know, we've had this 500, they didn't put a road in, they just put a minor road into it and joined up with the existing road out of it. So what, so going on that performance, what about the other thousand? Uh, so that would be just the same. I'd you have to get involved in the uh, planning process. Yes, well this is what I've got to learn about. Uh, but that's the point yeah. here, we're establishing a baseline. I uh, take it you've seen the academic study on Thames Road as well. No. About the, the before and after um, work on this. And I think King's did or King's College did. Yeah. Um, See what, what our forums Road. say, this is us here, yeah. um, and Thames Road goes around the back. Well, of course, it's outside our area, Thames Road. That's the attitude. Well, no, that's not our forum. That's, that's actually what's been right. money. Yeah. That's the, the fact that it's just across the road and the pollution can... Yeah. 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 Really? But it's early days. It's early days. <laughs> so I want one, everybody to help. Yeah. Another thing is you'd say that the houses are needed, but the traffic isn't. And, mm. and you know, to enable people to, to live there, where, a lovely place to live, or it used, as you say, it used to be a lovely place to live. Um, it's been downgraded simply because of the traffic. It isn't so much the housing which is the problem, although that will bring car users to the area, but really no one's most housing is necessary. But it is, what, what is necessary is that you should be quite heavy traffic, all those when I stood there, when I went with Jenny and I helped her and her friend to put them up and take them down, and and the traffic, it was absolutely scary. I've never felt so scared as on that roundabout where there's massive big trucks coming towards you. And I said, I'm not putting this up any higher than just one step on the step ladder. I wouldn't go any higher because I felt I felt really ill at ease climbing any further and patient the top over. Just big stuff there. So and it's just areas where particularly I think this sort of thing that they've got a really, really bad area, dreadful circumstances, and very little input really. But again, part of this comes back to the planning process is that it is done piecemeal. It is considered in isolation. It is never you have to consider each planning application on its individual merits. It's never studied cumulatively, and you get so many developments upon developments upon developments without the proper infrastructure put in. And and until, there are the some, until there are some changes in the planning system, um, in some respects we're beating our head on a brick wall. Mm. You have to keep doing yeah. it, yeah. but... <laughs> So that's again, what it is. It's again how the UK differs from, from most of Northern Europe, you know, in that they have um, massive planning for whole areas, they have zones, <coughs> and they ensure, and there's all kinds of protections for green spaces and for vegetation and for trees that we don't have here. And once something, once the master plan's been created in the zone and the standards for that zone are agreed, then that's it, you know, and you can't have piecemeal development on top of it, filling it in, whereas for some reason in the UK we have a... We see Greenwich is supposed to have various mm. uh, master plans for various areas, yeah. but you started off with um, one that was done for Charlton Riverside, yeah. and at the moment they're revising it completely, because what was the vision was for lots mm. of, I'd say, sort of captain's houses, and, you know, nice yeah. lower-rise yeah. stuff, yeah. Georgian, 
We know it's going to be tower blocks, and we know that. The, the, the latest published master plan was for the peninsula, or part of the peninsula, mm -hmm. and that was actually done by the prime developer. Well, that's the thing, the master plan has been done, and, and, and that is, that has been, been done by the developers, yeah, whereas actually the whole concept of master planning is yeah. meant to be public sector led for yeah. a wide area to yeah. ensure that the whole thing is sustainable. But, um, yeah. but it's so stories of the peninsula, isn't it? Yeah. It's what? 42 stories being some of the, the, the uh, building. Quite well, quite until they put the revised patterns in, yes. The go high. You see, Charlton Riverside was supposed to be this low level thing, mm -hmm. and uh, with connection to the rest of Charlton. Mm. But what is coming out of the various planning meetings I'm going to is that in fact um, it is being seen. In a sense it's going to be Fortress Riverside because they're now thinking of gateway buildings, i.e. tall ones, yeah. mm. um, ar around the perimeter. Yeah. Um, I, mean, I know this isn't air quality as such, but, uh, but Valley it House, is, yes, there is a problem it. that they are going to build our planning committee, or planning board to its great credit, um, sent it away to be rethought and reconsulted. Mm. But it's going to be where the Marks and Spe opposite the Marks and Spencer and Sainsbury Access Road, mm. a tall building, mm. and the um, even the building materials are going to be something like copper glazed brick mm. because the um, developer acknowledges mm. uh, that they're easy to clean in a dirty area. Mm. Uh, 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 honestly, that is in, this is in the planning documents, sorry, you know, I sound absurd, but that's in the planning documents. And the other thing is, which is where it really fell down at planning, was it's three different blocks, and one of them's going to be a poor block, with absolutely no integration with the others. And blocks A and B are the rich blocks. And when they did the air quality survey, they had diffusion tubes at the site of A and the site of B. Now, the poor block on <laughs> location C never got a diffusion tube because it was acknowledged and accepted yeah. that pollution levels would be lower there. Hang on a minute, we've just cut a road through and you've got a great big Sainsbury's, you've got a great big Marks and Spencer's car park. At the end of the road, you're going to have Next and Primark. And beyond that, you're going to have a banqueting hall for 150 with three toilets and God, God knows how many vehicle movements. Mm. And, and that is what is going on. So the people in this poor block are going to be sitting there in their poor block. Next to Macro Car Park. Uh, ne next, <laughs> just opposite the Sainsbury and Marks and Spencer's car park. And they're long capacity and the like hasn't been considered because they never put a bloody tube there. They're probably conscious that, um, you know, it's going to be more, you know, in terms of marketing what they've built, you know, they'd be more concerned about, you know, if, if, if there's an air quality issue with those that they're going to sell for a high price than the ones that Yeah, and they're going, going to have these wonderful balconies for you to go and sit and you can sit your, your g and T overlooking the traffic jam going <laughs> west towards the black That's water. That's another way, because there's a requirement. Can I sell you one? Yeah, <laughs> but there's a requirement in the plan to have these little balconies. Yeah, there's a minimum amount yeah. of access, and so you end up with balconies. And what, what, lethal, absolutely lethal. Positions. Yeah, and but China did this. See, China and other countries have made the same mistake. So China, you know, built high house, high density. And as a result, there's something worse. Their 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 population is starting to die of lung cancers and like in their forties, early forties. You know, they've got such a problem with smog and air pollution now that they are going back to low-rise, spaced-out developments between, you know, everyone wants the, you know, almost yeah. to copy what we used to build. Now we're making, we're copying their areas yeah. and going in the wrong direction. Now, shall I tell you the one mitigation measure for this, that they're going to have an air filtration unit, and what it can guarantee is that with the windows closed in the middle of the room, your um, exposure to NO2 won't exceed 40 the 40 limit. Only 40? Is that the best they can do? That is what they say. So, you know, if the filtration unit breaks down or you feel suicidal and you open your windows, <laughs> tough luck, mate. Such a shame that we won't be to in our windows. But um, that, that, that is just one example. Sorry. Yeah, that's interesting. But perhaps the principles of China ought to be brought to the, <coughs> to the peninsula where that's a Chinese development. 
uh, Night Dragon development yeah. down there. Because yeah. they're going to do a yeah. 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 42 plus, as you suggest. But Jill, it's payback time for 1841. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> well, so we've got to do that. Yes, <laughs> Oh, sorry. Yeah. Maybe we ought to wrap up now, uh, since we've all had a chance to speak and listen to some fantastic presentations. I'm sorry I've banged on about plumbing, yeah, but it's a bit. The, the two things to me go together. They are. No, it's good that I know some of you are talking with each other uh, occasionally, but when you've got people from slightly further afield, then um, you get more networking, more discussion about plans in a wide area, patterns can emerge, so it's quite useful. Mm -hmm. See what people do to try and uh, oppose these developments which are unwanted, share skills and techniques and etc. So that's one useful I think. Mm -hmm. I think we might wrap it up actually. Uh, it's a Saturday and mm -hmm. people want Thank you for organising it. Yes, thank you. And if anyone wants to swap email addresses and things, that would be interesting. Oh, yeah. I'm actually interested in persuading you to talk to somebody who says she's a green council. I've come with you. Oh, no, she's still talking. She's still working. She's still working.